Hope you all had a great weekend, and I'm here to share with you about the book of Joshua 10 to 12, chapters 10 to 12. Um, I want to give you a brief summary, and then I'm going to uh, compare. It's one of my favorite things. I'm gonna, it's, this is a tale of Yahashua and Yeshua, and of course that's Joshua and Jesus. And Yahashua is one of the uh, great pointers towards Jesus in the Old Testament. So first let's uh, do a quick summary um, of, of this section of, of the book of Joshua. The Israelites, led by Joshua, achieved significant victories against the Amorite kings, conquering most of the land of Canaan. They also faced challenges from remaining Canaanite forces and divide the conquered land among the 12 tribes. To me, I kind of went when the flood, when, when, when God brought the flood, saving only Noah and his family, uh, he said he would never do that again. Uh, I kind of see Joshua as replacing the flood for those specific people who were particularly wicked and needed to be taken out. So um, God kept his promise, and he used Joshua as the flood to uh, eradicate that evil that was in Canaan and uh, these other areas at the time. Uh, let's talk about, as I said, Yahashua and Yeshua. Um, first of all, they were both chosen leaders. Uh, Joshua was chosen by God to lead the Israelites. Jesus is our Messiah and the Son of God and sent to redeem humanity. But they were both chosen leaders. Uh, obedience. Both Joshua and Jesus demonstrate complete obedience to God's will. Thy will be done. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, Jesus is saying, please remove this cup of, of death from my lips. But nevertheless, beautiful word, thy will be done. Um, they both had the objective to conquer evil. Uh, in Joshua's case, it was just the evil and injustice and pretty nasty stuff that was going on amongst the people in this particular territory. And Jesus, his mission, mission, of course, was to conquer sin, death, and the forces of darkness and spiritual warfare through his sacrifices and through his sacrifice and teachings. Um, Joshua and Jesus also have in common that they were deliverers. Uh, Joshua brought deliverance to the Israelites in the promised land, and Jesus offers all of us spiritual deliverance from sin and the promise of eternal life for those whomsoever believe in him. Uh, I believe that a very important thing to realize about this section of the Bible is First of all, if you're not doing what God wants, then you're not going to have a good experience anyway, and it's not going to be good for anybody. But when you are working with God towards his purposes, you're working in tandem with him. So the story of Joshua teaches us that God has a plan. He chooses individuals to carry it out. Sometimes he chooses individuals that you would not expect, but he knows who, who has their heart with him and can carry out the mission, the objective. Um, we should be open to discerning God's purpose in our lives and following his guidance. Faithful obedience, as I said earlier, is essential. Do you think that God would have let the sun hang in the sky for three days, I believe it was, um, I might be mistaken, uh, if he didn't feel that Joshua was working in obedience to his wishes? Um, we, we're called to be active participants. Um, you, you know, James has maybe the best section on the subject of works, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about here, faith and works and all of that. But God wants us to be active 
in bringing his kingdom here on earth. And together, we can achieve great things. Together, we can achieve great things in the world. Together, we can achieve great things at Beach Church. There's no limit to what we can do as human beings in this world when we work in God's name towards his purposes and in tandem with him. And so I say, in Jesus' name, amen.